All right, I'm joined now by Dr. Joe Wu. Joe is a professor of surgery at Penn in Philadelphia. Joe, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So I heard your talk this morning. Good talk. Thank you very much. Congratulations. One of the many talks. At this stage, of the, it, we're in the, in the close to the end of the first day. I feel like I've heard every talk that I, that I know of, but yours was yeah. fabulous. So let me ask you, if somebody was going to go about setting up a mitral valve program, what would be the blueprint? How, how would you go about that? Well, the things you'd have to do would be to first identify excited individuals who are in various disciplines. Okay. So obviously your surgical partners, uh, the people who work with you in surgery, like the physician's assistants and nurse practitioners. And then you have to sort of go out a little bit and go to the, your anesthesia colleagues, right. your cardiology colleagues, and obviously the administration. You have to assemble an entire team that uh, would be vested in uh, seeing this thing through. And uh, you really want a, uh, a vibrant, dynamic team that um, is very excited about bringing something new into your medical center. Uh, that, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. In fact, if you look at the definition of team in a dictionary, it's exactly has all those components in it. So you go about and find these individuals, and do you then, how do you, so you've got people, you have a cardiologist who gee, says, I'm excited, I'd like to come see what you do in the OR, and you've got anesthesiologists, then how do you launch that program? What I'm getting at, really, is how do you educate your referral physicians, how right. to educate the patients, the consumers, right. let them know what right. you're doing? Well, typically speaking, you would be starting a program that uh, entails perhaps new uh, techniques, mm -hmm. um, advancing mitral valve repair, for example, uh, perhaps uh, minimally invasive Minimal or invasive. robotics techniques or transcatheter technology, something new to the community. And uh, you would um, obviously work with your uh, administration to develop uh, special relationships with your referring cardiologists. Uh, there are special uh, outreach programs sure. that you can have. Uh, they may be as simple as just going out to the actual practices and chatting with the uh, cardiologists, showing them some material, perhaps work that you've done, that you've published, um, some results, data. And uh, these outreach programs can be somewhat larger, maybe uh, um, bigger events in a, uh, say a restaurant setting right, right. where it's a little bit more casual and uh, you have some time to talk about a variety of things. Um, the other way to do this is actually to have a, uh, a CME type event, at, perhaps at your own institution or at a, a neutral location and uh, invite a, a large group of people and talk about um, the program that you're beginning to develop or just started. So, so you're really building a, a big educational arm of this. Joe, what do you do, you know, one of the critical things is outcomes, quality, and all that. Is, how do you, in, in that an important uh, aspect of this to sort of set up a program to assess what you're doing, make sure things, you know, are, are, are going the way you want them to go. Right. Quality is key nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, all these concepts of pay per, for performance, uh, you know, this is part of what we do every single day. So it's very important to follow all of your patients, look at all of their outcomes, index these results based upon uh, risk profile. Right. Right. So you uh, obtain the uh, observed to expected ratios for mortality and other events. And uh, assuming your results are good, you definitely want to report those. You want to publish those, you want to present those such in a form such as this, and uh, certainly get that information out to the referring cardiologists and also out to the lay public. Uh, most centers have some sort of uh, organization that uh, deals specifically with the press and um, uh, with the various news agencies sure, sure. and uh, are usually highly effective at getting that information out. And then, of course, there's your marketing division Absolutely. who will uh, put your face on billboards all over the city and uh, get, get that information out as well. But uh, the key is if you can show that uh, you're bringing new, innovative technology to a medical center and that you have outstanding results, the patients will come. Let me ask you to put your uh, thinking hat on. So where do you see your program, not, you know, I mean, if you were making it generic programs, where do you, where do you see mitral valve surgery or interventions five, seven, ten years from now? Right. So even to this day in the United States, uh, the general diffusion of mitral valve repair techniques has still not gotten all the way out there. 
and um, it's at uh, meetings such as this you, you can learn a variety of new techniques and use those. I think those uh, um, highly successful repair techniques will uh, diffuse further out into the community such that um, mitral valve repair for degenerative disease will be really the standard of care over the next few years. It is already, but right, it you know, really has to get out there. Um, the um, use of transcatheter technology, which uh, has made a huge impact in aortic valve sure. disease, will soon be coming to uh, mitral valve disease in a much broader clinical use. That's great. I mean, you've, you've certainly built a very good program and congratulations about that and I think you've given our viewers a great outline on sort of how to go about it now they have to they have to go do it they have to assemble what you've assembled Joe thanks very much thank you very much enjoy talking Take to care. you thanks bye-bye